Oh, and looking at what's happening in North Central, and well, nothing happened with the North Central like all other Victorian leagues, except a couple um, that which uh, we've referred to earlier uh, with Wimmera and Horsham District still holding out some hope. But North Central um, uh, with the uh, Loddon Valley and uh, the Bendigo connections caved at last week, uh, and Ricky Allen, who is from the Witcher Proof Narraport Club and also resident expert in the local area about farming and school teaching and just about everything else, uh, he joins me now. G'day, Ricky. How are are you? Yeah, good. Thanks, Wayne. Yeah, jack of all trades, master of none is what they say. Yeah, I think so. Hey, look, this is interesting. Last week, uh, North Central clearly looked at the circumstances that were emerging from uh, the situation, Loddon Valley going. North Central made the decision, I guess, would that have been relating more significantly to the uh, circumstances surrounding the Donald Club? Their ability to put their Melbourne-based players on the park would have been seen as being impossible. And maybe the roadmap that was given by the government really didn't look like uh, crowds of any sort would be able to be there in the next few weeks. So is that how the North Central League would have summed it up? I think the roadmap was the straw that um, broke the camel's back, Wayne. It had uh, uh, teams weren't allowed to meet up or groups of X amount to the 23rd of September, which is the Thursday before a Saturday. So technically teams wouldn't have been able to train until that Thursday if everything goes to plan um, until that Saturday. So just sort of tying the league teams a bit. So, yeah, um, I think last Friday after we had spoken, um, they sent out an announcement that they were pulling, um, pulling the league, which is... Yeah, it's sad in one way, Wayne, that we don't get a final result um, for the for the le- uh, for the season that was. But it was a it was a very mixed and complicated season, as, as we've spoken about. Very complicated. Let's um, go through some of the positives, though. We didn't play in 2020, so we got out on the park in 2021 for uh, a number of games. I think about 11 or 12 games. So, in, in that sense, a positive that kids got to play. Um, and some awards have been able to be given. Uh, kids that maybe progress that next year in junior football get those games under their belt. Yeah, that's right, Wayne. So the development of those kids is very important. Um, yeah, physically and mentally as well, socially for a lot of supporters, just being able to go back to the footy and see people from other towns. And um, yeah, especially that early on in the season, it started to feel like things were getting somewhat back to normality. And then, um, yeah, then COVID hit again to the um, region. So um, yeah, it's definitely different times from where we were a couple of years ago, Wayne. But there, as you said, there's, um, there's a silver lining to every cloud. So you just have to look a little bit deeper in some clouds. Certainly do. I mean, let's go to the positives on the field in the senior football ranks. I mean, Sea Lake and Daly, again, uh, were really, really strong. They got nailed later in the season by Birch of Watcham, and we got pretty excited about what might be uh, in the final series between those two clubs. But they have emerged as a real power in North Central football. They, they came out of Mallee football five, six years ago. Uh, they didn't initially uh, get the premiership glory they were looking for. They've now tasted that, and they really looked on track for a Back to back, yeah, they did, Wayne. Um, I think once you, in terms of Sea Lake, once they added the uh, the Woomerland connection of the four Donnans and Agcock um, and a couple of others into that side, it really took them from a side that was, um, you know, up there at competing um, for the end of the season to the benchmark, um, which they now are. Just to be able to add four or five experienced senior footballers, um, good senior footballers at that too. Uh, into any side in country footy uh, really, you know, propels it up the ladder and we're extremely well coached by Joel Donnan who um, I think he was awarded Central Victoria um, Coach of the Year so uh, congratulations to Joel on that, so that's a good a good bit of recognition for him for the efforts that he's done over the last couple of years and also the interleague this year, so yeah, well done to Joel Good juniors coming through for them too so they uh, could still be there in abouts next year. Having a look at the Birch of Watcham, I mean Castellano uh, excited us earlier on with his goal kicking we saw the uh, Dale Hinckley um, really, really a powerhouse uh, they were a really good side and uh, in a lot of respects might well have been able to take it up to an even beat Sea Lake Nandaley. Yeah, that's right Wayne, it's all hypothetical now isn't it um, if, they, if they had a full side with their Melbourne contingent in, uh, they definitely would have taken up to my own only concern is winning forms, good form, and that's what Sea Lake's got. They're, you know, they're proving themselves in finals. Um, they're having another outstanding year. Don't get, yeah, as you said, Birchip got them there at one stage. Probably the reliance on Gordon to perform on a big, on uh, every day for Birchip to beat Sea Lake is my only concern. And he's that good a player at Wayne that he probably he could have done it. Uh, he could have very well have performed on the day to beat Sea Lake. Um, however, if there's a line ball call, and um, you know, I was 
put it to gun point, I'd be uh, I'd be selecting Sea Lake if I had to. But it's all hypothetical. Certainly is. Wedderburn and reemerged. Their young talent that they've been bringing through uh, certainly started to have an impact. The Holt boys and so forth. Uh, they uh, have got something to look forward to. I thought Charlton too got into the top um, the ranks um, uh, in the um, early part of the season, but were headed by Donald, who recruited well amongst uh, those clubs. Perhaps Donald and Charlton. Uh, how do you see their junior programs? Um, uh, you know a bit about. Charlton's with a lot of your kids going down there. Do you see Charlton improving in their junior ranks into their senior side? Not so much from their juniors this year. I wouldn't have thought one in saying that. I haven't seen a lot of under-16s given the current situation at Witching Airport. Um, probably, yeah, Donald's always been reasonably strong and can draw on their juniors to perform well. Charlton has a, um, a good bunch of kids around that 22, 23 years of age who they're probably going to look to, um, you know, for, to build around them in the ne- next up and coming years. So if they can build around them when they're in their peak, you know, footballing um, age around that 25 year old, that uh, 25 years of age, they'll be, you know, a force to be reckoned with. Um, in terms of the size of, of outside of Sea Lake and Wedderburn, I was pretty excited about Donald. The day that they um, touched us up, their midfielders. Uh, yeah, you couldn't lay a finger on them, Wayne. And when you're getting that delivery into the forward line, um, they, I reckon they would have yeah, given a couple of sides a bit to, a bit to worry about. Certainly reckon so with um, the young um, factor there. Um, really, um, well, the old Ross young factor, I reckon, might be the way to put it. Hey, Sonata, uh, always um, have good juniors and will come back and bought. Uh, similarly, have had some really good junior years, um, so we're looking to see them emerge again in senior ranks. Your club, though, just to finalise out, you've appointed Bo Bish as the coach next year and a bit of a recruitment drive already. Anything that you can sort of tell us early on about how you're seeing things em- emerge for Witcher Proof now? Airport next year. It's amazing what a um, couple of drinks might uh, do to convince someone to do something, Wayne. So, and we'll congratulate both for taking this job on um, at no charge to the club. That's very kind of him. Um, anyway, uh, in terms of recruiting, Wayne, uh, we hope to announce something in the next um, in the next week or so, and that'll be through our um, yeah, Facebook page. Uh, yeah, so we're looking to obviously bolster our stocks. Um, in terms of yeah, quality, we need it. We need a couple of key position players. We've never something in the water at Witchy Wayne, and I think I drank a lot of it. There's not a lot of uh, height that's come out of Witchproof, so um, yeah, we might be looking for a, a tall, tall center forward or a ruckman or something, something like that. I reckon it's from all those years of carrying those big wheat sacks on your shoulders uh, up that hill um, for that um, King of the Mountain. I reckon you've, you've lost some height there. I reckon, Ricky. <laughs> Yeah, that that might have been it. No, that was, that was a bit before my time, but um, yeah, the the old man he had a go at that race, so maybe it was in their genes. <laughs> reckon so. Hey, look, it's been fantastic as always talking North Central with your your knowledge of the game and uh, your uh, cross section up to uh, other parts of life um, with teaching and also with uh, the farming pursuits. Um, that we do really enjoy your commentary, and I'm really looking forward to uh, maybe some more normality returning to regional Victoria and having a really good crack uh, next year with North Central football. And also, obviously, the netball reports we've had have been great too and hearing a bit more about how hockey is emerging through uh, when normal times return. We do thank you for joining us this year, Ricky. Thanks, Wayne. It's been a pleasure.